Hello friends, welcome to yet another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. And today in this module on retail segment, we will talk about traditional and modern retail. Let us see what is there on the agenda today. Well, we'll talk about what was the retail scene in India decades back. We will also talk about the emerging modern trends in the industry, impact of modern retail on the economy, different modern retail formats and also what is non-store retailing. Well, that's on the agenda today and I'm very excited to teach you on this module. Well, let's have a quick overview of what the retail formats in India are. In this particular segment, we will also talk about certain challenges which are faced by the retailers and also certain nitty gritties of organized and unorganized retail. So let's look at the retail industry. Retailing in India, certain facts about retail industry is that it is one of the pillars of the economy and retail industry in India is one of a strong hold or rather has a strong hold on the economy. It accounts for about 14 to 15% of the GDP of India. Well, it has been forecasted that this particular rate will increase from 14 to 15% to 20 to 25 or rather till 30% annually. Uh, the retail industry in the India, rather in the country, is the fifth largest in the world. So India ranks fifth largest in the world when it comes to retailing. Most of the industry is in the organized or uh, rather the unorganized sector is where India is there most of the time. Well, times are changing and we are looking at going from unorganized to organized retailing. But as of now, India is mostly under unorganized sector of retail. The sector or rather the industry is getting more and more popular nowadays and becoming organized in terms of serving the needs of the customers and that is where we feel the modernization is happening when we are going from unorganized to organized retail. Well friends let's talk about certain challenges faced by the retail industry. There is a lot of taxation involved when it comes to retail. So there are a lot of income tax uh, which a regular retailer has to pay and um, you know has to file his returns, etc. There are also certain taxation in terms of VAT, service taxes, etc. There are a lot of cumbersome laws as mentioned in one of the modules also that RAI, that is Retailer Association of India, has come up with certain cumbersome laws which is again a challenge faced by the retailers. Lack of trained workforce, a lot of retail formats hire people but they are not really trained and that is again a challenge. Lack of retailing courses, not many institutes in India are offering retail courses. So for those people who are really interested in getting into the retail, they are not having a very nice course of action or rather a course that they can take to study retail in detail. Low skill level for retailing management is again one of uh, another one of the challenges faced by the retailers in India today. Well friends, let's talk about uh, the retail industry. There are two forms or two formats under the retail. One is the unorganized sector and the other one is the organized sector. A basic difference between both of them is that in the unorganized sector, there are no taxation involved and it's really a single store which is being operated by you know families or generations down the line. Whereas in an organized sector, things are more, um, you know, in a sorted manner and there is a big lot of products and services which are being sold under uh, one roof itself. So when it comes to organized sector, there are a lot of new varieties of products and services and this is a huge market which is there to really understand in India. So today now we are going to talk about unorganized and organized retail in detail. We'll first talk about the unorganized retail. We have some things like a mom and pop stores. Peddlers and hawkers, street markets or street traders as well as market traders. These are generally under the unorganized sector, something as similar as a neighborhood store or a Kirana store. Let's quickly take a look at the organized retail. Well friends, under organized retail you have speciality stores, departmental stores, discount stores, we also have the convenience store. The hypermarket as well as the supermarket. Well friends, worry not, we will talk about all of these in detail now. 
Let's first talk about the mom and pop store. These are the Kirana stores which are there in each and every neighborhood and they're very very conveniently located at nooks and corners and easy to run down and get something for yourself. Well, these are generally family owned businesses and they cater to a very small section of a society. They are owned and operated by individuals so there is not a big chain of people who are operating these stores. The range of products that these mom and pop stores really sell are uh, very selective and few in number. So in a mom and pop store, you will not find uh, a huge variety of a same category of products. So they're very selective and they cater to the niche market or the you know people who are staying in that neighborhood. These stores are known for their high standards of customer service and customer loyalty. People who are staying close by always prefer to drop down to these mom and pop store to buy something. Next, let's look at the hawkers. Well, friends, I'm sure you have seen hawkers at different places in your neighborhood. Uh, hawkers are individuals who sell the various products and wares by carrying them through the street. So you will find a cycle person, you know, rather a vehicle owned by a hawker is generally a cycle or a tailor. And wherein these people, they are attracting the customers, uh, including having shouting out their products to them or having certain signs and placards wherein they sell the products through them. They also sell it in public places. So that's a hawker for you and these are unorganized. They definitely do not charge any kind of service tax or income tax. Next, let's look at the peddlers. Well, friends, I'm sure you all have seen them. They generally sit in the middle of a street or rather, you know, at a corner of a street area selling the products like you see in the image over here. A peddler is defined as a retail dealer who brings goods from different kinds of places all over the country, exhibiting them for a particular sale. He does not have a fixed place of conducting business, so you may just find uh, one person at one day or probably a Monday at a particular place and on a Tuesday or Wednesday he's sitting at some particular other place. So they do not have a fixed place of business as such and they carry their sale wherever they are targeting or whichever area they're targeting. Friends, let's look at the next segment which is market and street traders. A street market is an outdoor market such as a traditionally held in a market square or in a market town. In most of the cities, you will find a place or an area which is known as the hub of that particular city and that's the marketplace where everyone flocks down. Different parts of the cities, they come down to that place to buy certain things. They are often held on a particular day of the week. I'm sure you would have heard of weekly hearts like a Monday heart or a Wednesday heart or even a Saturday heart. These are places wherein you will find a lot of them selling it on a weekly day. Very similar markets or bazaars, they can be found in large enclosed spaces instead of on a street. So either you will find them in a street or you will find them in an enclosed market space area. Talking about now we're getting into the organized retail market friends and today we're going to talk about speciality store. Let's talk about them. A speciality store is a store which has or rather sells a particular category of a product. They are known for those particular specialized category. For example, if you want to buy a Gucci or if you want to buy a Reebok or Nike, you will go into a speciality store which is only and only selling a Nike or a Reebok. They do not sell any other fruits, vegetables or any other kind of things. So they are very, very specific to the category that they are selling. And that is known as a speciality store. Talking about next, a departmental store. A retailer of such store carries a variety of categories and has a broad assortment of average price and offer considerable amount of customer service. Well, under a department store, you will find food, beverage, as well as other products. And one of the examples is a food world in Bangalore. Now, these particular departmental stores only cater to foods and products only. Let's look at discount stores. These are stores which have an extensive assortment of merchandise, which are at a very affordable pricing and cut rate prices, and they offer discounts throughout the year. So that's a you know big uh, challenging place to a lot of other uh, retailers because these discount stores are on discount or sale throughout the year. Normally retailers sell less fashion or oriented brands and the service is not very good because they're always on discount and hence people do not offer good customer service here. Example, the Loot is a very famous discount store all over the country. 
We have next the convenience stores. This is essentially found in residential areas and they provide limited amount of merchandise at more than average pricey with a speedy checkout system. Store is ideal for emergency and immediate purchase. So if you want to purchase something on an immediate or an urgent basis, you will run to a convenience store which might be just in your neighborhood. An example could be um, Reliance Fresh or even Nature's Basket for that matter. Next, let's talk about Hypermarket. Well, provide variety of huge volumes of exclusive merchandise at very, very low margins. And an example of this is a big bazaar or a food bazaar, wherein you will find a lot of food products, vegetables, groceries, etc. at very compelling prices. And that's the reason people really flock down to them because their operating cost is comparatively less than the other retail formats. So if you want to buy a vegetable, you will go to a food bazaar or big bazaar rather than to a hypermarket. Examples are DMART, Big Bazaar, you have Trend, Landmark, Star Bazaar, etc. Next friends, we will talk about supermarket. Well, a supermarket is a self-service store. It consists mainly of groceries and limited products of non-food items. And hence friends, in a supermarket, you will not find many other category of products like clothing, shoes, accessories, etc. They cater to mostly food and food related items and products only. They may adopt a high, low or EDLP strategy for pricing. Supermarkets can be anywhere between 25,000 or rather 20,000 to 40,000 square feet. So they are quite huge in space. That is why they are supermarkets. Example is spa supermarket. Hence, we also have a lot of other examples on supermarket. Well, malls have recently, since a couple of years back, been launched into India and now you will find malls everywhere, be it in any city that you are in in the country, you will find malls. It has a range of retail shops at a single outlet and they have products like food, entertainment, as well as retail products all under one roof. So if you want to take a day out with your family, you can do shopping, you can watch a movie or there are a lot of restaurants also in malls which can give you really good entertainment and good snacking facilities. Examples are in Orbit, you have Ambience Mall, you have other malls all over the country in every city of the country. So these are on malls. Well friends, e-tailing is coming up in a big way in India because the world is getting digitalized. Now in e-tailing, that is Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal, etc. Uh, these are for people who do not want to enter, you know, exit out of their home rather. And they just want to stay in the convenience of their home and they want to order products and services without the hassle of traveling. So these are good for them. They order the products and the products come to them through these particular channels like eBay and Amazon. Talking about vending machines, this is again a form of retailer rather when an automated piece of equipment is where the customers drop in the money in the vending machine and they can buy the product according to their choices and you will find a lot of vending machines in a lot of office spaces as well as airports all over the country. They all cater to vending machines. Well friends, that brings us to the end of this particular module on traditional and modern retail. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this particular segment on retail industry. Keep watching, more videos coming your way. Thank you for watching us.